Welcome to the beginner's guide to freezer cooking. Today we're going to walk you through how to make freezer meals in a way that's going to work for you and in a way that's going to make this doable. And we're really excited for you to be able to leave today feeling like you're going to be able to do this. We want you to have the confidence to know that you can do this because we're going to tell you step by step everything that you need to know to do freezer meals. You will be confident by the time you're done this because we are going to tell you what tools you need, what you need to do for prep, what kind of containers you need to use, where you're going to pick your recipes, how many are you going to make, how are you going to make freezer meals work for you. And if you're wondering, are freezer meals for me? We're going to answer that question too. So thank you for joining us and we're going to dive right in. I thought it might be useful to tell you a little bit about us first and kind of let you know how our journey to freezer cooking began. My name's Christy. I live two doors down from Sharla and we'll get to that part <laughs> why we are standing here together. But this is how I learned freezer cooking. The year was probably 2004. I was a newlywed. I cooked every day. I grew up in a traditional home, so did my husband, and so we just kind of fell into those roles of the wife being the cook. And 20 years later, this is still kind of the case, but I made it easier for myself, and this is how I learned. These wonderful women from Southern Alberta wrote a book called The Big Cook, and every three months they got together and they made like over 200 meals kind of in a day, like they would have a day of prep and then they would have a day of assembly. And I mean, sometimes they would commandeer the kitchen in their church because it would be big enough sort of thing. And so they actually came to my church and gave a demonstration because I had kind of heard about freezer meals, but I couldn't imagine what it was until I actually saw them do it. And they literally stood up on the stage and had eight bags of chicken already in the bag and they stood there and they made bang 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 eight meals and i sat in the audience and i thought that makes so much sense i can do that and so i called my friend tracy i bought the book i have a signed copy <laughs> and i bought the book and i phoned my friend tracy and i said we're gonna do this thing and you're gonna do this with me and she did and i had another friend jamie who did it with me so you know we jumped in two feet first we picked our recipes from the book and what was nice about the book is that it gave you the amounts that you needed to do, you know, two recipes, four recipes, eight recipes, and you had an idea of how many cups of chopped onion you needed, and it just made it make sense for you. So I learned a lot of new great recipes, and I learned how to do batch cooking in a way that I had never seen before, I had never learned before. So that kind of began my freezer meal journey. My name is Sharla, and like Christy said, we are neighbors and great friends, and freezer cooking has actually been a part of that friendship for a it long really time. Has. So we'll tell you about that in a second. But I came to freezer cooking a little bit differently. I came out of absolute desperation. When I first got married, I didn't know how to cook, and uh, well, I did cook, I knew two recipes. Mum's Monday macaroni and a appetizer veg vegetable pizza thing. And I had no idea where to even start. A few years into that, after like pretty much living on Mum's Monday macaroni and stir fries, um, I discovered this cookbook, uh, which I'm gonna show you. Now this is well loved. Look, look, at, look at how, how well loved this like, book I is. Like I have all these tabs and post-its and it, so, this is Cooking for the Rushed. It is written by Sandy Richard, who is also um, someone from Alberta, which is coincidentally where we live. We are from Canada. Alberta. Sandy's book showed me, I have to show you this because it's kind it's of- It's so smart. It's kind of amazing. So this is a very well-loved recipe as you can see, but it shows you like, while this is happening, do this in order to make your side dish. Like while, while you're browning the meat, have the rice on the stove and then set the timer for this long and then put this in the oven and when it's this far in, then start your vegetables or whatever. I'm not explaining it very well, but it's... In short, basically it's how to know when to start things so that they all end at the same time. So yes. that you can sit down and have all of your food ready at once. We saw our moms do it and it looked so effortless 
but it's but something it, you have to learn. I think this is a brilliant book. It's brilliant. It's per, it was perfect for a beginner cook like me, someone who had no idea what I was doing, but that really got me started in cooking. And then when it came to freezer cooking, like I was saying, that came from desperation, which was now I knew how to cook. I was mm -hmm. kind of getting my feet under me. She also has the idea in here of doing a meal plan and your shopping lists. And so that started to save me a lot of time and money. I was no longer having like the vegetables in my crisper go moldy because right. I had- You had a plan. It. Yeah, I had a plan. Yeah. But then my husband and I, we had at that point, we had two kids, then we started fostering. So we fostered for eight years. And along the way of that, we started adopting some of our fosterlings. And then we adopted some other kids as well. And so our family kind of exploded. So I ended up being a mom of seven and five of those kids had special needs. And I, I know I make it sound like it just like poof happened and it didn't because obviously along the way, like, you know, there were choices made and this kind of, we saw that this was happening, but it, it was kind of like one day before we got the last two kids. So when we just had five kids, just had five, just kids, had five kids, um, I, I really did sort of wake up one day and realize that I was in over my head. Like I was totally overwhelmed when it came to the house, the laundry, and mostly the cooking and keeping my kids fed. That was causing so much stress and the amount of appointments that my special needs kids had were, it, it was like not doable. I, something had to give something had to give and you know where I said before I didn't have you know vegetables going going moldy in my crisper because I had a meal plan it didn't matter anymore that I had a meal plan because those vegetables were going moldy because I didn't have time to cook those meals so I literally would write down a meal plan and not get to it and then I would have that guilt right and that feeling and in the meantime, of time not only wasting your food but you're probably you're hitting the drive through which I know you're not a, you were never a drive through mom. You really no. weren't, but it was the convenience foods or it was the same thing over and over because it was quick and fast and easy. Yeah, lots of like spaghetti and prego. Like that, you know, just right. lots of that. And and then that feeling when those vegetables go moldy yeah. and you spent the money and whatever. And then, and, and when you're like, my kids are eating like granola bars for breakfast or popcorn for supper, for real. And then you feel like a failure and you're, sure. you I, have the guilt. And so for me, it was literally desperation. And so I don't remember ever hearing about freezer meals, but I started to think like, okay, what if I doubled the chili and I froze one? And right. so it was kind of that. And then I would seek out, are there recipes that freeze well? And so I started to kind of get a little bit of momentum. And then I discovered like, okay, I can spend a day and make a month or more of meals and then never have to feel like a failure that month where it's four o'clock and I haven't figured out supper. Or where one of my kids is like, what's for supper? And I'm like, oh, I, like, I, it like, hadn't even occurred to it's me. It's 5.30 already, <laughs> you yeah. know? And so, I like, and I was able to have things that went freezer to slow cooker so that when I had all those appointments, I could actually just come home and dinner was done. And so for me, it transformed my life truly. And that's one of the reasons I'm so incredibly passionate about it is because when you can go from feeling like a failure to feeling like, hey, I've got this to the point where we later added two more kids. like. <laughs> You know, right. so it's like, like, I actually felt like I can do this and not to say that I didn't still have mountains of laundry sometimes and not to, but this took so much off my plate, especially my mental space. Totally. And when I moved here, they had already lived here for a few years and our family moved in two doors down and we finally met, we'd been here for three or four months and we finally met. And I think in our very first discussion, standing here in this kitchen, freezer meals came up and she did them, I did them. And we thought, you know, it's time to plan something together. And it was magic. It's it was amazing magic. It was perfect. Yeah. It really was. So we have been doing this together for over a decade. We figure that we have conservatively made over, over 5,000 freezer meals together. together. Yeah. 
We want you to find this freedom. Now you might be wondering, but is this for me? Because maybe... Do you have a giant family? You don't have a giant family. Maybe it's just you living on your own. Or maybe yeah. it's just you and your spouse. And so if that is the case, then we need to tell you that these are actually even more for you. Even more for you. <laughs> what we're finding is the people that are empty nesters or are finding themselves living alone at an older age. Or who are young and single. Or who are young and single. We can take these meals and they can divide them. And so you could make three or four recipes that will come out with a month worth of meals. And so then you have some variety. We'd hear stories of people saying, you know, I have a can of beans every night for supper because when you don't have a family to feed and it's just yourself, sometimes lose that imagination or lose that drive. It is hard to cook for yourself when you're the only person that's going to be eating. It. It's hard to be motivated and also, and like you said, to think creatively, but also if you make the thing, you have leftovers that you have to eat You're for like a week and a half. Days. Like, so if you make five things and you double them, then you could have like 40 different meals. You can still have your can of beans. Don't worry. You can still sprinkle that in there sometimes. Once in a very Once long in a while. while. And you can still go for supper and you can still meet with your friends, but you could also invite a friend over and, you know, pull out a pork tenderloin that you made a week and a half ago and just pop it in the oven there and cook up some potatoes. Or the microwave if you don't know how to cook, because we've got recipes for those of you that don't know how to cook. <laughs> we have recipes for those of you who need to use the microwave. So this really can be for everybody. Now, for the, for the big family question. Yes. I, I have so, a family of four, so these are very cookie cutter a little bit for my family. Most of our meals feed four to six people. That's kind of perfect. My husband takes a lunch to work and Sometimes then I have a leftover at home because I work from home. And so we're kind of the typical, you know, nuclear family that would be eating these freezer meals. When you have seven in your family, it's a different story. Nine. Oh, seven <laughs> kids, you're right, nine. nine. Nine, Yeah, so we have a bit of a supersized family because now some of our kids are getting older and we now have our first grandbaby and he actually is eight months old and he's actually living with us right now. So, I mean, this family just keeps growing. It's multiplying. Oh, one of our sons is getting married this summer. So like it, it is just multiplying. It is. We are feeding more and more people over here and freezer meals work for us too. So sometimes because our family is large, I have to take out two of the same meal from the freezer because if it's designed for four people, then I'm gonna pull out two bags. Now that's easy because when we make our meals together, we mm -hmm. do four of each recipe so she can take two home and I can keep two. So I can do that. But we also, because of the size of my family and stuff, we have some of our meals that are designed They're for large families. Big. They're ones that I would save for when we're having company or something. I know that, okay, we're gonna eat this for leftovers <laughs> for a day or two. And that's okay because there's a time and a place to have those. So this is so how you make it work. Large families, absolutely. Now, the other question that goes with families is picky eaters. If you've got picky eaters, is freezer cooking for you? Absolutely. Two scenarios can happen. One, you can customize them. These are your freezer meals. Oh, I'm making this meal and it calls for green beans, but I have a kid that doesn't eat the green beans. You can decide to omit them or you can put peas in if you know that he'll eat that. Or you can put something else in that you know will work for your family. Or if you're a member of our club, you can type in kid-friendly and only the kid-friendly recipes will populate because we are kind of the queens of the picky eater. One of the other questions that kind of goes along with that is... Dietary. Like, dietary, yeah. So if you are... Low sodium. Free, yeah. Dairy-free. Keto. And, yeah, keto, vegetarian, all of those things. Yes, we have recipes for you. Again, um, in our club, we have filters, so you can just quickly filter for low carb recipes or vegetarian recipes or gluten free or dairy free. We, again, we understand those things. I have um, some kids that are lactose intolerant, so we, we often adapt for those anyway. Some of the other things that we come up against are things like, how do you afford a giant mega meal session like that? Because we're buying three months of groceries at once and it is expensive to do it all at once, but we didn't start there. So the best way to tell you to start with freezer meals to make it affordable is to double your recipe. Kind of like how Charlotte said with the chili. If you want to be able to really stack your freezer and not have to think about dinner and have it just where you're just grabbing meals out every single day, then 
it is the upfront cost of doing that is a, is a real concern and consideration for a lot of people because you don't have those extra hundreds of dollars to go and buy all of those groceries, but you can get there and you can get to where you're literally saving hundreds of dollars every single month on your groceries because you're doing freezer cooking. And that doesn't even account for the fact that you're not going through the drive-thru and you're not ordering in and you're not having food delivered. That is just on grocery savings alone because you're able to take advantage of the deals because you're able to buy in bulk, in bulk sometimes and get those in your freezer. You don't ever have those good intentions, AKA produce going bad in your crisper because, because you put them into the meals. You're chopping them up and putting them into your meals, into your freezer right at the time. So that is saving you too, because it's not wasting. But to get there, what you need to be able to do is put the money that you're saving aside mm -hmm. and be very intentional about it so that you're like, okay, this is how much I have saved on the groceries. Therefore, this is going in a separate account or a separate envelope put or it in your envelope. whatever it is. We love the envelope system right yep. here. And then when you are able to save enough, then you can go and do a week's worth, then a month's worth, then three months worth. Mm -hmm. And the way that you do that is just like Christy said, you find a sale on ground beef, let's say. So you just would have bought the one pack. You buy two packs, you make what you were going to make, but you double it. And so it costs you a little more, but then the next week you're going to save because you've already got that meal there. And that meal was bought with things that were on sale. And you just keep doing that. And then you start noticing like, it is I'm working. able to breathe. Like I've got breathing yeah. room in my budget because I've got the meals. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. It does really work out. You just have to pay a little bit of attention and be intentional about saving that extra so you can put it towards your groceries for the next week or the next month. And, and I, it works because we do hear people, we oh, have people yeah. in our Facebook group who are literally breaking it down, saying she has saved over $200 a month. Or 300 with her family in a row, of four, right? or yeah. Yes. Now, the last thing we want to make sure that you know about is that if you are not a great cook, we hear you because, but we didn't know this stuff when we started. Charvo knew how to do two recipes. Freezer cooking actually can help you learn how to cook because our recipes are broken right down to a label that we stick on our bag that tells you how long to cook this for. And we have a surprise for you at the end of this video that you're going to want to stick around for because it will really help you out. Our kids, because of the labels, like my kids are teenagers, they're able to put stuff in the oven. They can put a casserole in the oven and make supper. Yeah. And if you find a skillet meal, maybe a little bit intimidating, stick to a casserole. We have some very, very, very simple recipes. And actually, we're going to have a video for you next week. And this video is specific for you. It is specific for the beginners. The beginners. And what we are doing in that video is we're doing all beginner freezer cooking recipes. The simplest, the least amount of prep, like the absolute- The mom's macaroni of freezer meals. These are gonna be like five ingredient ones or just the completely like, we're gonna take you by the hand. And, and I promise you there will be variety and I promise you they're gonna taste good because they're gonna be ones that we would be happy to serve our families ourselves. Yes. Sorry. So if you want to make sure not to miss that video then hit that little subscribe button and the notification bell because then YouTube will notify you when that video becomes available and you can sit down and just see exactly how we're gonna make those meals so that you can start doing these things because those are beginner freezer meals it's gonna be so awesome so if you already have a really great chili recipe and a really great mac and cheese you can freeze mac and cheese by the way mm -hmm. then go ahead and make those Make one, freeze the other, because next week, future you will thank you, right? Yes, and if you're not sure what freezes, because that is, that's an actual consideration. That's something where you can't freeze everything, and even if, like, if you've got an amazing recipe that you love, but it's got things in there that won't freeze well, mm -hmm. you're going to not like us. <laughs> you're not going to like freezer cooking. We want your first experiences to be positive. That's right. So, we have... This cheat sheet, we've laminated ours, of what freezes well and what doesn't. So things that we have kind of memorized over the years, we mm -hmm. don't always have to refer to the cheat sheet just for us anymore, but things like milk on its own doesn't really freeze really well, but do you know what's funny? Milk products freeze great. 
Sour mm -hmm. cream is awesome. Cream cheese is great. Any kind of cheese. If you want to use milk in something, you could use evaporated milk instead or heavy whipping cream, which makes everything better. <laughs> and you could use those things in place of milk in your recipe. So you could even learn how to convert your own recipes yes. into freezer meal recipes. So you take this. We're going to put a link in the description below. It's free. Go and download your little cheat sheet here. And then you would take your favorite recipe, you know the one I mean. Right now when I'm saying it, you're thinking of something, right? Yeah, it's probably true. And so you take that recipe and you look at this list and see if, if every ingredient in it freezes well, great. If not, we're gonna, on this list, give you substitutions, like Christy just said, with the evaporated milk or heavy whipping cream for milk. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna be able to convert your favorite recipes into freezer meals. Not only that, it does say on here, how to freeze something. So once you have done maybe a week or two of freezer meals and you have experienced that freedom of oh, yes. not being in that rush and I'm talking about, you know, you, your kids are home from school and you have to leave within 30 minutes to go to soccer and you either hit the drive through or you are throwing granola bars back at them as you were driving and they were putting their stuff on. What if instead you had something in the slow cooker, kind of like Charlotte mentioned in the beginning, there is a freedom in that. There is a freedom in opening up your freezer and knowing, oh, I have eight or 10 meals here where I'm not panicking, I'm not stuck, there's, there's some food security, but there's also some relief and that mental load uh, gets to take a bit, bit of a vacation. <laughs> yes, and when you experience that and you start, like when you have those first few days of not having to think about dinner, that's when you might get a little hooked you and might, then... You might get hooked. <laughs> you really might. We've talked about maybe having interventions with some people in our Facebook group because they cannot pass a sale anymore now because now they see the sale and they will buy the food because they can because they're saving money on their freezer meals. They will buy the food and come home and make it even though their freezer is like just about jammed. But it's okay because... This like, is the best addiction to have. It's a really good addiction to have. So once you have that thing where you have that feeling of the freedom, you have that feeling of this felt so good, then you're going to be hooked, like we said. And so now you're going to want to do your first stack, like your first intentional, I am doing freezer meals. And so later in this video, we're going to tell you about a cooking, a class. cooking class we have. Where we show you everything. And you will be able to walk out of that cooking class with actually two stacks if you double, That's which right. in the class we double everything we double because everything. it's just as fast. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be telling you more about that at the end of this video, but that will enable you to have everything you need to create your first stack. So when you go into any kind of thing where you're actually going to be making a stack or three months worth of meals or anything in between, anything beyond just doubling, it's really, really important that you do prep. Yes. So here's my analogy with prep. Actually, first I'm going to explain to you what prep looks like for us. Prep is going through all our recipes, calculating all the different ingredients that we need and the quantities that we need, and then further breaking it down. So if we're going to do these five recipes, we're going to need, say, three onions. One of those onions should be minced and two should be diced. You will need to know how many pounds of ground beef you need, how many of those should you brown as part of your prep? So some of the things that we prep are we're chopping our vegetables ahead of time, our, our onions, our zucchini, our carrots, our peppers. Our peppers. We are browning our meat that needs to be browned. So ground beef, ground sausage. Sometimes we cook our chicken ahead of time. Sometimes we don't. We have recipes that do both. So what I always make an analogy to is like painting a room. When you are going to paint a room in your house, the first thing you have to do is you have to prep. Often you have to wash your walls. You're going to do things like removing your baseboards. You are going to go and look at all the little pinholes and patchwork that needs to be done in your walls. And if you have teenagers, you know that there's about a million pinholes. And so you're going to do your prep with your little mudding and then you have to sand it. Then if you can cut in, do you know what cutting in is? Cutting in is when you're good with your brush and you can go along a straight edge without getting anything on the side and you just stick it on the wall. That's cutting in. You get, not me. <laughs> you get good at doing that after you've been painting for a while. If you're not, you have to use tape. So part of your prep would then be to tape. 
Plus, you have already picked your paint. You've had to get your stuff, your equipment, your tools ready for it. So on the day that finally comes when you are ready to paint, I would say probably 85 to 90% of the work in painting a room is before you ever open up a can of paint. When it's time to paint, you can just paint because you've done all of your prep. The same is true for freezer meals. We have done all of our prep and then it's time to assemble. And we, you put just, it, we just do it right in the bag. bag. We do it like, like those ladies I saw do the demonstration at church and my mind just kind of went poof. I could just do it right in the bag. And you line up your bags and you put your prepped ingredients in, you seal them up, you put a sticker on it, or you get a marker out and you write it down and you freeze it. It's so awesome to just be able to dump our ingredients into the bag. Like, and I love watching as our freezer stacks higher and higher and higher. With the video coming up in one week, cause you've hit your subscribe button and you've hit your bell, right? That video is gonna show up with beginner recipes. It's gonna show you the overheads. It's gonna show you the prep and you are going to be able You're to be able assemble to do these. It. So when it comes to prep, there are some things that can make it so much faster. We have some awesome time-saving tips for you when it comes to prep. Like these things will save you hours. There's so many, we actually have a whole video on it. So we're so gonna link it we'll there. We'll put a link there and you can go and investigate the prep that really needs to happen for because a lot of meals. If you're gonna be prepping like just one pound of ground beef, I'm sure that you can just cook it up in a skillet. When you're gonna be doing 10 pounds of ground beef or more. You might want an easier way to do it. Yeah, and we've got ideas for that for you. We've got multiple ideas for that for you. And we're gonna be able to show you all of that. So if you're interested in learning more about prep, that video is great. It really is. We didn't wanna make this video three hours long. So we are we gonna have. send we've you. We've done it. Yeah. But really, no, we'll send you we'll send you to other places to go and do your deep dive. Yes. So for containers, this is another one where if you have burning questions about containers, we have a video. We have a video. So we're gonna put the link there. And there are a lot of questions that people have about containers. You know, can I use the glass containers that I already have? Can I use the the foil um, casserole dish type can I use a casserole dish that I already own mm -hmm. um, the, and so that video will answer all of those questions for you but we're just going to share really quickly um, on containers that our preference um, is to use brand name large resealable freezer bags and the quart size resealable freezer bags and so this is what we literally assemble our meals in and. I would say 95% of the time, our freezer meal recipes are in the bags. We find that stacks really well. We can fit a lot more meals than mm -hmm. if we were doing them in the foil trays. Once in a while, we have to use the foil trays because- Sometimes they're late. Well, if you're doing the lasagna, obviously you need it to be layered. These are a microwave safe, dishwasher safe, freezer safe container you can also get them with sections in them and this is what we often use when we're making freezer meals for one those single serving mm -hmm. freezer meals we do them in these containers we also have small foil containers that we do those in or we use the quart size bag for those yep um other things that you might need are some tools now listen we do not want freezer meal tools to be a barrier to anybody starting out doing freezer meals the barest of tools that you're gonna need. You're gonna probably need a skillet or something to cook in. You're gonna need a cutting board and a good knife. Beyond and then your that, bags. And your bags for, for your storage. But beyond that, that's kind of it. You just get creative with your knife. Now, when we are doing 40 cups of onions at once, you better believe I have an onion chopper that I like to use. Yes. Now. We're gonna put a link right there to an entire video on the kitchen gadgets and tools that we find do save us some time, but truly, and we say it again in that video, we don't want you to go out and buy all these things. And that's a bare minimum thing for us even. We've, we've got it down to where there are a few things, like the electric can opener, that we're very thankful to have, but that's you don't right. need to start with it. You really don't. If you have a can opener, you're good. So we want you to just use what you already have. We don't want you out spending a lot of money or time getting ready. Just use what you have in your kitchen. Uh, another question that we often get is 
how do you prevent freezer burn? Mm -hmm. I yep. want to start by saying that these meals are good for three to six months in your freezer. If you make them now and expect to eat them two years from now, you might be disappointed. In your freezer, food is good indefinitely. It will last for a very, very long time. The longer it's in, the more likely it is to have freezer burn. If you've had something in there for a week and it's already getting crystally, that's just frost. It happens, it's because there's moisture that's in the air in the bag. So that's why in all of our videos, you will hear us say, get all the air out of the bag, because that's what prevents your freezer burn. Over time, it's still going to happen. We use labels. We put our date on everything because we want to use them up in a timely fashion so that they don't get wasted. So if you want to prevent freezer burn, your first line of attack is going to be getting that air out of the bag. You also don't want to put things that have not fully cooled into the bag mm -hmm. because that can contribute to freezer burn. It also makes your freezer have to work harder and that, you know. And it might melt the thing next to it where it doesn't freeze as nicely. Right. So yeah. we just, uh, you know, all around want to avoid that. But those are kind of your first and second line of defense against freezer burn. And then the other thing is just arming yourself with the knowledge. So sticking the date on it. You can easily prevent freezer burn without even having to vacuum seal. We don't have a vacuum sealer, yeah. but that would. It does absolutely help on the freezer burn issue. People have meat in their freezer for two or three years and it's still totally fine because, because of the, the vacuum air. sealer. Yeah. Right. The last thing we want to talk about is Sometimes it can be overwhelming to think about making more than two or three meals at a time. And so it is. When we do our mega sessions, there is a lot of work, like I mentioned about the prep, there is a lot of work that goes into it and you have to be accurate. You have to double check. She's, she does the leg work, so to speak. For the grocery list. For the grocery the list. It is, a, yeah. it is a big job. But there is an answer for that too. We have an answer for everything. Because we just so deeply believe in freezer meals and believe that it is for everybody, we have a freezer meals club. And that's literally what it is. It's our recipes and it's the system. All our recipes are on our website for free. You can, almost all of them, you can go pick our recipes up anytime you want. What the club is really good for is you can just kind of plunk in a few recipes into a meal plan and it will give you that list. It will tell you how many Not onions. Not just the shopping list, but oh, the prep list. The prep list. It will tell you if you need to mince your onions or slice your onions. It will tell you how many rounds of sausage you need to chop up or how many, ground, uh, how many pounds of ground beef you have to brown. So all of that is available to you literally at the click of a button. With and the printable labels. Our favorite part is the printable labels. I don't know if that's our favorite part, but it is. Can you tell we really like the labels? It's a really a value add because the cooking instructions are listed right on it. And so you don't have to go back to the website and say, oh, how did, how did we have to cook that sheet pan? Oh, right, it's, it's right there on the thing. The other thing that we wanted to tell you about today is this cooking class that we've alluded to before. The reason that we are inviting you to this cooking class is because although the recipes in this are probably a little above complete beginner recipes, they're great for beginner freezer cooking because even if you are a total beginner, this walks you through. It and really, really does. You get a PDF free. The cooking class is free, the PDF is free, and in the PDF, it gives you that prep list. It gives you the shopping list, but it gives you that prep list. So and it, it gives tells you the labels. You, you have to slice your sausage. Yes. It tells you, yes, and yes, the best, right? The best part is the, the, the labels. labels. And actually the other best part is these are, because these are sheet pan meals, the, the protein and the vegetables are all in the same bag. Therefore they go on the same sheet pan. Therefore you don't need to know how to cook five different things to get them all done at the same time. They'll all be done at once. I think there's only, they all come out of the oven at, at one time. There's one or two of them that suggest that you maybe cook it with rice. So we're going to put a link below in the description to the cooking class so you can join us there if you want to actually, if you feel inspired and you want to dive in, you don't want to just double your own meals, you want to actually dive in and create your first stack right now and you can grab that. We're also going to put a link to the What Freezes cheat sheet. That's going to be in the description. We've got links to other videos like the prep video, the container video, the tools video. Go and learn how to chop an onion and you will have dinner freedom. It's really could be that simple. If you have been afraid 
of freezer cooking because maybe you've watched one of our mega sessions and you're like, I could never do that many meals. We don't want you to start with 140 meals. That's... No, we don't recommend that at all. <laughs> but you, you can, can start with a few. Double your spaghetti sauce. Like you can double your spaghetti sauce. And then next week you'll have a day where all you have to do is cook your spaghetti noodles and you've got dinner. Like that sounds awesome. It does sound awesome. I'm so glad we do this. The last tip I'm gonna give you that we didn't really have an agenda for, but you should find a friend to cook with. Yes. You really should, It, um, especially when you're doing a mega session, but we've learned so much from each other over the years, over these 5,000 <laughs> meals that we've made together. And it is really great to um, develop a friendship while you're working and while you're working side by side and it does make it go by faster and you learn just so much about other people is the best thing ever. That's really what, like we said at the beginning of the video, that kind of the freezer cooking skyrocketed on our friendship because when you're together for two full days, you just talk about you all cover the things. A lot of topics and it's not always about cooking, let no. me tell you. And then, you know, we started this when our kids were little and so we would have to take breaks to feed them snacks or mm -hmm. put on another movie for them because, you know, that's how you get through these But things. then as they got older, they wanted to run the the um, electric can opener and now her daughter, we pay her to do our prep. She's awesome. She's, she's taking culinary and she's great. So it, our kids have kind of grown up doing this and it's just been, a, it's, can you tell we love freezer cooking? We really, really do. We want you to learn, we want you to join us and we're so glad that you joined us today. Right there, we're gonna put a link to that video on all the prep tips and that will hopefully give you some inspiration. I hope it doesn't overwhelm you because again, it's okay to just start with doubling your recipes. You don't have to brown the large amounts no, of ground beef. You don't. This prep so video is showing us getting ready for a mega session. So yes. don't be intimidated by that, but just take some notes. See what works for you and freezer meals can be for you. We are excited for you to get started on this journey and happy cooking.